Oh, motherfucker, you can't have my cornbread. That's for damn sure. Because if you try to take my cornbread, part two of my killing spree going to begin up in here on your ass right now. If you think about my cornbread, begin to taste out your mouth. That's for damn sure. Now, fuck him. Fuck this. Because I'm from New York City, goddammit. Nobody take no cornbread from me. That go for you and any other you motherfucking farmers want to try some shit. You fuck around with me, it's going to be constant. What's happening? The Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. We back another episode. Maestro Styles, Trey Frazier. What's, What's going good? on, homie? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Real quick, uh, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. Follow Trey Frazier at Trey Frazier and myself at Maestro Styles. Uh, on Twitter, make sure you follow Trey Frazier at Barbershop SPOR2. You can follow me. Um, at Maestro Styles on Twitter. Make sure you like the Facebook page and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, hey man, it, 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 it's I, good. I, it's not a whole lot going on, but 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 I but I I had some I had some thoughts this week, man. And I had some things. I had a couple of things that I want to get off my chest. I mean, obviously we gonna get we gonna talk about the draft and. Obviously, we're going to talk about uh, Jameis Winston and, you know, a couple of other things that's been going on this week in the Jordan Doc. Episode obviously. three and four. Yes, sir. Obviously, yep. yes, obviously sir. we're going to get into that. Yes, sir. But I got a couple off topics, man, that we're going to get to a little later. Uh, one, namely, uh, concerning Papa John's and the second uh, concerning uh, how we how we currently are feeling about the plight of the black quarterback. But we'll get into that um We'll get into all that. good topics. Yeah, certainly for certain, man. Because I, I, you know, it, 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 it was on my mind because uh, I don't know if you've been watching uh, the Shaq reality TV show. What's it called? Yeah, I, I don't. You know, don't 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 hold me to the fire. I don't know what the name of the damn episode is. I mean, the, the show is, but he has. Oh, you show. said Shaq. Yeah, oh, Shaq. You said Shaq. Yeah, oh, okay. Shaquille O'Neal has a reality okay. TV show on TNT that I happen to see. Um, over the weekend, and mm-hmm. um, you know he uh, he talked about Papa John's, and you know it was going on around the time he get hired. And um, yeah, right, right. So now you know now I just got some now I got some some interesting conversation. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Yeah, but what's uh, going on with you though? Uh, hashtag living a quarantine life, man. <laughs> uh, another another week in the books, man. This is like week six, I think. Working from home, kids' schools are still closed. My daughter asks me every day, I want to go to school, Daddy. I want to go to school. So you know what I did yesterday? Got her in the car. We drove to her school. And, you know, for people that don't know, um, you know, obviously we, we're, in the, we're in the great state of Maryland. I don't know if I would, I would apply great to the state of Maryland, but, you know, nonetheless, At least that's they have... Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know, man. I but I tell you what. I tell you what. Um, so my daughter's school, right? So obviously, all their curriculum and everything that they normally do is shut down. They just so happen to go ahead and sign up under the state and become a become a daycare for the essential workers that have to, you know, go into work, nurses, you know, transportation, that kind of a thing, right? Sure. So all the teachers, all the teachers to that school have been volunteering to provide daycare services in that same building for other parents of kids that don't go to the school. 
So, so I, needless to say, I took Natalie to school, right, mm-hmm. yesterday. And, you know, I, I told her, I said, you know, let's just walk around the building. Let's, you know, try to get a good feel of everything. Man, I walk right in the lobby. And a lady, and I know her pretty well, but she, she stopped us and was like, um, you know, due to everything that's going on and the fact that we're kind of operating differently, we can't let you go, you know, walk toward the back of the school. Right. So so I was like, um, it's, well, it, it's Natalie's teacher here. And she was like, yeah. So Natalie's teacher, she stopped what she was doing. She came out to the front, greeted Natalie, talked with her for a little bit. You know, wanted to know what was going on as far as how are you going to get how are you going to keep these pre-kindergarten slash kindergarten students um, not so much focus, but in terms of interaction, because Nate's school, which she goes to public school, they're doing all types of online sessions um, and they're doing all types of stuff with technology, whereas Natalie's school isn't as vested in the technology. So. I asked her, I said, yo, what are you going to do about that? Because I'm sure you're getting a lot of kids that are saying they want to come back to school. They want to come back to school. And she says, well, that's something we've been talking about, you know, for, you know, for a while now. We're just starting to get into the crux of it. So so I was like, I bet. So, you know, it, it, it was about 10 minutes before we left the school, went back to the car. And so Debbie's like, um, why are they thinking about this now? And I said, and I told her, I said, you know, the, the here's the problem. The problem is, is that we're paying tuition right now. Like we, we can't even get a refund of all the money that we owe for the rest of the school year. Tell them niggas like, you mad, son. That that's every that's every parent. Yeah. You know. And here's the thing, because you know, we had this conversation about public school versus private school. When it comes to finances, we all know public schools. Are funded by the government, local governments, and things like that. Private schools are funded by the parents that bring their kids to the school. So without that money, basically that school doesn't operate at all. And you ain't getting that money. So back. I get it, and we're not getting that money back. And I understand. I signed a contract. I read the fine print. No problem. Nobody was nobody was expecting COVID nineteen to shut down schools. You know what I mean? Like this is unprecedented. So it's like. I right, fine. I I get it. I got a problem with you guys utilizing teachers that you pay for, that you pay. You pay those teachers with our money that we still got to pay, and they're watching other kids from other p- places. Like something right there, man. I walked out of there thinking, yo, like they got to... Th- this is part of why they're not interacting with their kids because the teachers are interacting with other kids that don't even go to the damn school mm. I, got a, I got i got a problem with that well um i hear you that's a valid and i don't want to we, we, we didn't turn this into a whole new podcast really quickly sure sure, um, sure but i think what some other people would say is <laughs> um well what do those kids who don't have babysitters do no, and everything, I mean, everything you're bringing up is a good point. I mean, we're talking about people that have to work, that can't take their kids to whatever daycare they normally go to, whether it's because they're closed, whether it's the type of daycare. It could be somebody's house, and that person might not want too many kids in their house because of, you know, the social distancing restrictions. So those parents got to find alternatives. And it just so happens that our school volunteered to become a center for daycare kids that have essential working parents. Okay, no problem. I see you guys are trying to do a good deed and all that stuff. But God oh, bless you. Thank but you. Um, yes, yeah, it, it's 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 capitalism. It's 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 definitely capitalism. Now let me let me just throw one point in there and we can move on. It's not that um, Natalie can't go to this daycare because she she definitely can we're a, we're considered essential workers because we're working at home so natalie can go it's just debbie's not comfortable with her you know wow. going knowing you know yeah she can go oh so what's the problem 
well, the problem is, is that Nate's school has all these interactions. Oh, he you has have interactions. a problem with the fact you just you have solely a problem with the fact that they can't. Uh, they're not making a uh, effort to uh, connect with the kids that are students of the school. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well. Okay. I thought it, you exactly. were saying. I thought you was more so tripping off the fact that your money was going to uh, helping those other kids who don't have babysitters. You know, don't don't have care. Well, I mean, I'm I'm kind of tripping off of that too. When again, I understand that I signed a contract, and you know, we're, uh, parents were were not eligible to get our money back. Well, you got to give yourself like a good Samaritan at that point. Like your money is helping. Uh, kids who don't have daycare for parents who have to go to work. I mean, sure, yo, sure, that's yeah. That, that, that part, to the situation. That that part that part I get. It just kind of goes back to the interaction with the kids in comparison to what Nate's getting with his public school. Maybe yeah. they can invest a little bit more money into. You know, having, time, a, though, having the teachers interact with their kids. But at the same time, though, Trey, uh, ain't nobody in public schools babysitting nobody kids. Well, is is that true? I mean, I don't know. I, 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 public schools are not at our public schools aren't running daycares in their public schools. Is is that a fact? I don't know. That's, that's a why. Fact. I, no, that's a fact. That's a okay. That's a oh, fact. okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I teachers I just, are I just at, yeah. School. Teachers are at home. Okay. No, I, I, I get that part. Teachers are at home. Um, private schools, I guess, you know, some teachers have, have volunteered to work under those um, conditions for the essential. Yeah, because they still want to get paid. So, yeah, no, I, I get that part. I just I, I'm, I just want to pay you to educate my kid. That, that That's all I'm saying. It's a it's a it's a selfish thought that that's. Uh, I wouldn't really say so. I wouldn't that. say I wouldn't say it's selfish. I just would say in closing that you know, like that I would I, if I were in y'all situation, I would kind of consider. I would just chalk that. Well, you ain't got no choice but to chalk it up. But I would yeah, I ain't chalking it up. Right? Yeah. we've been chalking it up for two months now. Yeah, so you know, yeah, and, and, yeah, ain't really nothing you can do. But look, yeah, take it as your contribution to COVID nineteen is what I'll say. Well, the great philosopher Maestro Styles has spoken. I guess just um, the. Uh, to cap it off like that, I guess. I don't know. Perspective. It's all about perspective, right? That that's it. Yeah. So uh the Jordan Doc. Episodes three and four aired Sunday. Um has I just want you to know that um I've made a conscious effort to not just watch it binge it all because I did mm-hmm. get a, a link where I could just binge all you know, all the ten episodes at one time and right. just be ahead of it. But uh, I made uh-huh. a conscious, uh, conscious decision for the sake of content of the, co- of the podcast to not watch the entire uh, ten episodes. Mm. So you know what ESPN did this past Sunday? I like that they're doing this. So if you missed episodes one and two the first week, last week what they did they re-aired one and two. So that it could lead into the new episodes yeah. three and four. Yeah. So I kind of like I kind of like that, well, you know, I'm for the people about, that missed out. I'm talking week. about I had the opportunity to watch five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, and I'm just ignoring it in my email. Hmm. I gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, but I'm not gonna so, watch it. I'm just gonna right. go ahead and uh, yeah, watch because it with you. yeah, because we could spill the beans yeah. early. Yeah, we, I, we, we, we could we could definitely do that. I won't do that. <laughs> we could definitely do that. Hey, hey, hey our, our show might blow up because of that. <laughs> nah, I doubt it. <laughs> but uh, um, real quick, yeah. real quick before we get into it, man, let me say what's up to Vince Wright. Uh, Big what up, man? Three hundred three. Deacon Dale is in the building. Uh, Big L, Deacon Big L, show on own. Uh, what up, fellas? I don't know what that means, but all right. I, I, I don't know what that I don't know what that is either. I don't well, know. Shouts out to you, homie. So, uh, so go ahead. Your thoughts on? Uh, yeah, I was I was getting ready to say uh, your, your thoughts on uh, episodes three and four. Well, my first thoughts is my, my first thoughts is is that you know, um, you know, when we talked about this. Sh- okay, Siri. Let me take my watch off because I feel like my wrist keep on pushing on my little. Watch. Got that Apple Watch going, man. Yeah. Um, 
So, um, my f- when we started talking about this show, uh, this uh, doc documentary before it started airing, um, and we're yeah. we're still calling this a Michael Jordan documentary. And um, the more I'm looking at this documentary, I don't feel like this is a um, Michael Jordan documentary as much anymore. I, I you know I feel like this is a um, and you know I you know just it's too much it's is this more a focus on Michael Jordan and his career or is this a focus on the that last year that last Chicago Bulls year I coming into this documentary I was under the impression that we were uh talking about Michael Jordan so when we were talking so 10 episodes on Michael Jordan and the Bulls were kind of uh, like a sidecar Maestro uh Oh, Maestro, I, you, you, you kind of broke up there for a minute, but I think if I, I yeah. think I know what you, I, know, I think I know what you're asking. You're you're asking, uh, um, was this a Michael Jordan documentary or well, is this a Bulls documentary that's talked that talked about that last season? You know, uh, the Last Dance, um, right? Because and because they just talking about it. They just going on and they going. They went into Pippen's backstory and. Some of Rodman's backstory and Phil Jackson's backstory and um, right, you right. know, like for me, for me, it's like this: we are we're not going to get some of the things about Michael Jordan that um, that we thought we were going to get. Um, I.e., we're ne- we're not going to find. I don't think we're going to find out why Michael Jordan retired um, the first time. I don't think we're going to. I don't think they're going to cover it. Um, um, you might be right. You, I don't you think right. I don't. I also don't. I'm not 100 percent sure that they're going to cover um, the the flu game in quotation marks. Um, right. I, I don't think that. I don't think we're going to get a flu game episode. I don't think. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to talk about Michael Jordan's gambling issues in uh, in detail. Right. Now they play. They right. they play with it, which um, is sort of the like the. Not, it, it's sort of part of the lead-in as to why he left the first time. It's it's it's. It, I guess those two par- two parts kind of come, you know, hand in hand together. It's the gambling problem, problem, um, which was part of the, or if not most of the reason why he left the first time in ninety what ninety three ninety four. Um, I'm not going to say that I don't think we're going to get that. I still think it's a little too early okay. in in the documentary to, you know, make that that conclusion. Um I I I'll just say this. Um this documentary when it first when I first started seeing advertisements last year that this was it was a Bulls documentary. Um I didn't take it as a Michael Jordan or Scotty P- Pippen, or I, I didn't take it as they were going to focus in on everybody's upbringing and how they, you know, came to the team and, you know, and all this stuff. I think up until this point, I think I've got what I've expected up to this point. Like we, we talked about Jerry Krause's handling of the basketball team and how he's, you know, made out to be this villain. Um, we, we've talked about, um, Jordan and his upbringing a little bit, which I, I mean, if there was anybody that they were going to go back on and, you know, kind of chronologize the life, college, you know, to the pros, it would definitely be Michael Jordan. But they did it with Scottie um, Pippen. They did it with no, I, no, no, no. Yeah, you're right. They did do it with Scotty and they did it with Rodman they did it with and, and stuff. Right, they did. I'm not saying that they didn't. I'm saying if there was one thing to expect... It was definitely that they were going to chronologize uh, wow. Michael Jordan's, um, you know, career. That they were definitely going to do that. Yeah. Um, my my whole thing is is that um, this this documentary is for me is a it's a bulls documentary for me, and um, but we keep calling it the Jordan documentary, and let's be clear, we. As in the world has been calling it the Michael Jordan documentary up in I mean we're still calling it the Michael Jordan documentary now I guess uh-huh. because we you know we've been so fixated on calling it that leading up until the but this isn't a Michael Jordan documentary this is a 
Chicago Bulls documentary, um, at least so far. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. And I, and, I, and I think the point I'm trying to drive home is, is that I think I, ex- I expected this to be um, a Bulls documentary. And again, I didn't think they would go into the life of Michael. I mean, of Phil Jackson. I didn't think that they dig that deep. Like, you know, they talking about this dude coaching the Albany, whatever that team, you know, was called, you know, back then. Like, I don't, I don't give a damn about what Phil, what Phil Jackson coached back in the day. I don't know. You know, was, you know what I'm saying? That was good. That was good information for me. Um, I like that they're giving backstory on on the the uh, vital players of that um, of that team. I, I, I'm, I'm with it. I'm with. Let's be clear. I'm enjoying the documentary so far. Um, mm-hmm. I am too. I'm in, I'm enjoying. I, I am too. But um, for all that to say, all that to say, um, <laughs> what's up, Jungle Brother? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ask you in a second. What up, Jungle? Um, what up, Jungle? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah. For all that, all that to say is that I, I just was. First of all, I, I was, I got the wrong impression of what this documentary was. So I had, um. Mm-hmm expectations coming in and I'm not getting it but now that I've kind of readjusted my expectations it's still a good documentary that I, I'm cool no doubt. with it yeah I'm cool with no it doubt. so um so to be clear so to be clear so your initial expectations was that this was supposed to be a Jordan documentary, documentary. right okay not a Chicago gotcha. Bulls in their last gotcha. year documentary that was gotcha. my um that was my impression um, okay. So, uh, uh, Jungle Brother, I, I, I'll answer your question. So, Jungle Brother, I don't know if you're in the chat room, Trey. I am. Uh, I read it. That's my sure. smiles. <laughs> uh, why are you so eager to hear something negative about uh, Michael Jordan? Uh, do you also want to see how Bird was a deadbeat dad documentary? Actually, if actually I would. If see, here's the thing about me. Um, if you're gonna tell, if you're gonna give me a documentary about anybody. I want every single rumor, positive or negative, to be addressed in that documentary. And I knew, I needed to be addressed to my liking. Meaning, if you were a deadbeat dad, I want to hear about it. If you were a drug addict, I want to hear about it. If you was a pimp, if you was a pimp and a philanthropist at the same time, I want to hear about it. I think it's those dichotomies about uh, dichotomies of different of people are what make documentaries documentaries interesting don't just give me all the good don't just give me all the bad give me what it was martin luther king uh was allegedly who he was positively and who he was negatively and he's still martin luther king it just means that he had a he had some shit he was a man he wasn't perfect so yeah i'm eager to hear about michael jordan negatively because michael jordan's legacy we never hear anything about him negative and and that's and that's not to say that we don't want anything positive about Michael Jordan because I'm sure that we're gonna get we're gonna get a lot of positive with Michael Jordan and that's great. I mean, yeah. there's there's things that we did not know, um, you know, up until this documentary that were some positive things going on. Um, but I'll you know I'll echo what you said. Um, if you're gonna give us all this twenty years later. Then you can't just talk about the good. You got to talk about the bad too, because that's what that's what makes legacies. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's what makes legacies so great is that you had the ups and downs, you had the roadblocks, you were you were you know at the top of the mountain. You you know you fell, you got back up like that. That's what all those things make what legacies are. It's, it can't just all be. Good. It it, it it just can't. I don't know anybody that or, has that kind of you know legacy. I don't. And if if you if you are a piece of shit human being, and I'm not saying this about Jordan, but if you are a piece of shit human being that's done legendary things, that doesn't shade from the fact that you've done legendary things. You're just a piece of shit person that's done mm. legendary things. Both things can be true. So um, so I'm with it. I want to hear about it. It's up to the people to decide. It's up mm-hmm. to every single, single, solitary person to decide whether they wanted to call this person legendary or not based on their negative to positive ratio. That's that's up to the single, solitary person to decide. Um, Jordan mm-hmm. is a legend for his basketball play, for his philanthropy, even if 
uh, he shitted Isaiah Thomas out of the Dream Team, and that's what he did. <laughs> Isaiah right, Thomas right. should have been on the Dream Team. So, hey, yep. say what you want. He's still a legend, but I disagree with the fact that he had Isaiah Thomas not be on the uh, Dream Team for whatever their issues were. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and, and I guess that was another big point in those episodes was the whole, uh, the, the hate relationship between the Pistons and the Bulls uh, back in the day. Um, and, <laughs> look, uh, when it comes to that, hey, I love the Pistons. <laughs> I love the Pistons for what back then for what they've done for what they did. Um, watching them, watching them maul Jordan because Jordan was mm-hmm. the greatest, and they knew that in in order to affect him on the court that they had to maul him. And watching them do it, and you know, and they beating him, and then him coming back knowing he was going to get mauled, got stronger, and then came back and you know, and finally got him. That's we mm-hmm. gotta do that. We got that's that's fire. That's fire. So I have a so so the more I the more I watch this documentary and you know getting into that um, last episode where they did talk about the Pistons and Isaiah Thomas and Bill Lambeer and you know a lot of people had a lot to say you know the past couple of days Bill Lambeer was on TV um, you know with Rachel Nichols talking about the Bulls Isaiah was on first take yesterday and you know a couple other people Mm -hmm. you know had some stuff to say in that episode but the more I watch this documentary the more appreciation I have for not just the Detroit Pistons, but Isaiah Thomas himself. Mm-hmm. Think about think about this, right? Back in the day in the NBA, you had Bird, you, you had the table Magic. Or something? I'm I'm really not. I, oh, I, that's no. downstairs. Oh, okay. That's that's downstairs. I'm that's sorry. downstairs. It was, it, I'm the, sorry. The, the house the house is yeah. I guess too you. Man. I it's you. it's too shallow. But that's that's not me. Um. But but think about this back in the day in the NBA. You had Bird, you had Magic, you had MJ. And at one point in, in that particular year, I, I don't remember if it was 88 or 89, I don't remember the year, Isaiah took down all three of those guys, you know, to win the chip yeah. that year. Yeah. And the NBA at that time, um, those were the crown jewels of the NBA. Magic Bird and Michael. Mm. Those were the crown jewels. And that guy, Isaiah, took down all three to get to the top. Um, the Pistons, I, I hate the fact that every time you turn on their highlights um, from back in the day, somebody's elbowing somebody, somebody's giving yeah. a clothesline to somebody. Yeah. And, you know, this whole narrative about. Um, you know, they, they weren't a beloved um, championship team. Um, th- you know, these guys were rough and, you know, they, you know, we don't like their brand of basketball. I'm like, wait a minute, y'all. This is this. This is the legacy. This is the legacy of the Detroit Pistons from you're talking from 88 to 91 when they, you know, when they were in conference finals and, you know, the two championships and they could have they could have won a third one. Yeah. They, they could have won a third one. They, they could have been that like a dynasty. Um, I tell you what, man. And there, there's a lot of double standards going on with the situation. So um, getting to the part where Jordan finally beat them. In 91 and Bill Lambert and Isaiah decided, hey, we're you know, we're not going to shake hands with these guys. Let's just walk off the court. And I like the way Isaiah explained in the episode that, hey, look, we thought this was the way to do it. You know, you go down, you just walk off the court. No shaking hands. Ain't no we going to get up. You know, it ain't none of that because they talked about when they were trying to get through the Celtics, you know, a couple years prior to that. And they even showed the clip when somebody was shooting a free throw and the Celtics were walking off the court like um, Parrish and Bird, um, Dennis Johnson. Those guys, they were walking off the court and McHale, while Isaiah Thomas was trying to, you know, dap him up, McHale was, you know, walking toward the locker room. And back then, according to people, nobody gave the Celtics smoke 
for not shaking hands with the Pistons. Yeah. So now that Detroit gets taken down by the great Michael Jordan, now y'all want to label the Pistons as you know bad sportsmanship? Like that? Like like like? Come on! I I, I get it. I get it. They're the bad boy Pistons. They you know they earned that name with the style of play. You know they they earned the moniker because of what they did. You know to those. You know, to those teams, those championship teams. You know, the Lakers won chips. Then the Celtics got their chips. Jordan went and got his chip. Um, the league. It sounds to me, the more I watch this thing, the more it it appears to me that the league back then did not appreciate in that time. They they weren't a beloved championship team. And look, there were teams that tried to follow the Piston model. My New York Knicks did that, that, you know, now we didn't win the chip, but we followed that, you know, we're just going to get Anthony Mason and Oakley and we going, you know, we going to close line niggas in the lane too. We going to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, the Pacers with the Davis brothers and Rick Smiths and those guys, they, they did the same thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, Isaiah Thomas, nobody, nobody, nobody. Nobody gave those teams smoke. Isaiah Thomas would say that um, that even the Bulls took that took that from you know took that style into, in, into they the They had defense. Oakley and they had Bill Cartwright. Well, they talking about and, later on after uh, yeah they talking about like later on when they started winning championships. Yeah, they, right. They started to um, to do that. I agree with the idea. I mean, the, I the, I agree. I agree the idea that they pissed away that that legacy, um, mm-hmm. but the. But it was because of the name. They should have never been called the bad boys in the eighties. That's just not. Um, yeah, right, right. Yeah, I mean, that's just not. That wasn't the the media, the 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 mainstream. I don't think bad meant good then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think bad right. was a good no, thing. It didn't. Yeah, no, it, I don't it think didn't. bad was a good thing. Like it became in the nineties. You're talking. Um, you're talking about the crack era. Yeah, you're talking late yeah. '80s, right? So, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, huh. so ideally, I mean, so ideally, the uh, Pistons were are, are were the pioneers of a mm. brand of basketball that you know people in the '90s or teams in the '90s absorbed and mm-hmm. became popular. But it's like a, a great person. I once heard a great person say, I think it was Chris Rock. You never want to be the first at doing anything. Mm-hmm. No, of course not. You never want to be the first person because you're going to be the person that, that you're not going to get the credit. You're right, not going right. to be the person. You're not going to. You're not going to get the positive acclaim anyway. And right, and, and, right. Here, it, and here it is. Um, so sticking in with the Pistons, um, in your opinion, mm-hmm. uh, should Isaiah Thomas had been on the dream team and should have and should Michael Jordan had. Um, I guess put his try to attempted to put their differences aside because if you're asking me, there at least Christian Leitner could have not made this team for Isaiah Thomas to be on this team. Yeah, and I and I heard something earlier where Dominique wasn't on that team either. I, I don't remember um, exactly what that team consisted of. Um, somebody said that Dominique was on that team either. I, I'm going to have to fact check that. But if you're saying what's true about Leitner being on there, then I agree with you that Leitner could have stayed off this team and they could have got somebody on there. You know, <laughs> they could have got. Yeah, they could have got. But 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 if you're if you're going to shun Isaiah Thomas, um, give give me give me more price in, well, instead of Christian Leitner. Well, I'm not and, shunning. And, 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 and I'm saying. Thomas. It should be Isaiah Thomas. No, I, I, I'm saying no, no, no. I agree with you. Okay. I agree with you. It should have been Isaiah Thomas. Uh, I'm just saying that if you're Michael Jordan and you're just electing to not put Isaiah on the team, team, get me somebody else other than Christian Leitner yeah. to be on this team. Yeah. Um. But 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 to that though, um, Isaiah definitely should have been on that team. Team, there's no question about that. Um, I think a couple of the factors played into that. Obviously, um, Jordan and Isaiah's relationship, or you know, lack thereof, um, because of that 
you know, series in the conference final that year, um, that didn't sit well with Jordan. And I guess you can tell that, you know, Jordan always had this chip on his shoulder. Um, you know, he, he was just a stone cold killer throughout his entire career. And I, like, and I guess that what, you know, made Jordan to be Jordan. Um, the other factor I think that, you know, kind of played into all this was um, this was around the time when Magic Johnson tested positive for HIV. Am I correct about that? This uh, was some, was somewhere around the time, yeah. some somewhere around there. Right. OK, so they had that. So they had the one all star game where they kissed in the middle of the court or something. It, it, Isaiah and Magic did that little thing. And then, um, and then you had the the, uh, the positive test for magic to test HIV, um, positive for HIV, and I, I think that um, may have played a part because you know magic and Isaiah, you know, kind of you know had, had their you know yeah. their little beef, yeah. whatever they had, yeah, they had some tension, you know, long before you know that little special came out a couple years ago where they kind of dapped it up it and you know shook hands on it. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So. Um, so I, I think I think those were the main factors as to why Isaiah wasn't in that in that year's team. Yeah, um, and, and but make no mistake purposes, about it. And for all intents and purposes, Michael Jordan and the Magic got along. All you know, like when uh, your boy got his first um, got his first uh, title, uh, Jordan. Um, you know, uh, because Mag- because who did he because who did he? Play? He play. Yeah. He played Magic Johnson. But I'm saying, but yeah, is that they went to the boy? They went to the boy. Um, Magic went to Jordan and then with you know gave him the whole congratulations spiel and all that. Uh, like a yeah, right, like right. a great sportsmanship guy that Magic has always been. Um, he went and did that, and you mm-hmm. know that you know there that was. Um, thank you, Deacon Dale. Deacon Dale gave us a list of the '92 Dream Team. Yes, sir. Uh, but, but we talking about Jordan, Magic, Bird, Barkley, Carl Malone, Stockton, Ewan, David Robinson, Clyde Drexler, Pippen, Mullen, and Leitner. Who you yeah, take? no Dominique. Yeah, I mean you, you have that's, see, that's what this, that's, see, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying take Christian Leitner off this roster and put my man Dominique, the highlight reel, on this roster. Who would you take Come off? On. We already got laying her out. Take we got laying her out for for Isaiah. Who would you take off? Who would I? What do you mean? In order to get Dominique Wilkins on this team, somebody has to come off. No, 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 no. I'm saying if if you're keeping if you're Jordan and you're electing to keep Isaiah off this team, don't put Leitner in this lineup. Oh, oh, get gotcha. Dominique instead. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So no. I'm yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that gotcha. you know two people people got to come off this list just for Isaiah and Dominique. I mean, even though that would be hard to do, you're looking at this list. Yeah. If I had to, if I had to pick a name, I would probably take Mullen off. Yeah. And put Dom, I would take Mullen off, put Dominique in, take Leitner off, put Isaiah in. Damn, but all you you're shooting, man. Mullen was a, a shooter, man. And this is Trey's. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is Trey's internet going out. Um, yep. I don't know what the hell it is. Trey, you still there? Yeah, I'm, I'm still here. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, you just had an episode. But, uh. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, but, it, but in, um. So, moving on in the Jordan doc, uh, mm-hmm. how do you feel about how they covered Dennis Rodman? Um, well, two things. Uh, n- uh, number one, Carmen Electra is old as hell. <laughs> number she's one, good, though, and uh, she does, but she's still old. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wasn't. I was. When I, saw I wasn't you, trying to. When I saw your tweet. Saying that she was old, I thought she was saying that like uh-huh. she, she didn't look good for her age. She actually looks pretty good for her age. Oh no! Oh no! 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 I was I wasn't trying to insinuate that. I was uh-huh. just like, yo, like she's old. And 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 to be honest with you, um, that's the first time I've seen Carmen Electra in a while. Like I like I yeah. I, I I can't recall probably since 
I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think if there was something other than like with her and Rodman being out and about. I'm I'm trying to think of what else I saw her in on TV since yeah. then. And I, and, I, and, I, and I couldn't think and I couldn't think of nothing. nothing. I, 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 I couldn't. So that's why when I saw her, I was like, yo, wow. Like, yo, this, this chick is old. But yeah, she she looks good for her age. Yeah, she looks no, no. Age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, hate there. I forget, I forget who I saw. Who I was looking at, oh, it was something on ESPN, I was looking at YouTube earlier today, that called her uh, pre-Kim Kardashian. <laughs> like, mm. she was the, the pioneer of, uh, she was the uh. pioneer of uh, being famous for nothing. Oh, uh, I, I don't know, What's I don't she know. Famous for? What's she famous for? Go ahead and tell me what she famous for. I don't know. No, I'm not saying she's famous for anything, but to put, to label her as the, the Kardashian before the Kardashians... I I don't know about that one. I I'd have accurate. to I have to repeat that one. I think that's pretty accurate. Okay. Well, uh, Carmen Electro did some reality shows back in the day. I thought that was probably not. That was probably after, not. That was after her fame, though. That wasn't when she was in the prime of her fame. Which the thing she did Baywatch. She was on Baywatch. She didn't have many Baywatch. Speaking okay. roles or something. I, I I never watched Baywatch, but to my understanding, she didn't have a whole bunch of speaking roles or nothing like that. She was just the sexy girl on Baywatch, and right. Dennis Rodman dated her, and she was around Hollywood because she was um, the attractive girl on Baywatch, apparently. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. She was, but she was an actress, though, right? Um. Yeah. I mean, I guess. I mean, but the way that the way I the way it was explained to me when I was looking at uh, YouTube videos. Is that she was an actress, but she was kind of like the actress that uh, she was tight casted. So it's like we don't even really know if she can act per se. Like if she she ain't up there with you know Sandra Bullock or nothing. She just was no. a the pretty no. girl. She was the pretty girl that gets roles for being the pretty girl. I, I guess I guess kind of like a uh, kind of like a Tracy Bingham type. I don't know if you remember Tracy Bingham. I do. Um, not. I, the name okay. sounds familiar, but no. Okay, yeah, I, I think she was another Baywatch chick, but yeah, she was kind of like she was on there because she was the pretty girl, you know, that everybody was looking forward to when they turned on Baywatch. Yeah. Um, but but getting back to Rodman, right? Um, dude, yo, the dude is the dude is a character, man. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's no secret that he that he was. Yeah. You know, but just that the outfits. Um, the, and, and, and what I learned about, you know, Jordan happening to go get him, um, I, I, I don't think I ever knew that that happened Neither where Phil I. Jackson actually gave him some time off to go, you know, clear his head, I do what he had, he had to do, go to Vegas and, you know, do that. And, and, and it's funny because Jordan made the point, like, look, man, 48 hours, you ain't getting no Dennis Rodman back in 48 hours, mm-hmm. hours, like, you know, to the point where Jordan had to go get the guy and, you know, had to pull him out of his bed. And he was like, I ain't trying to get into when I, you know, went into the room. I ain't trying to get into what I saw. But we all know what he saw. Carmen Electra was, you know, she, you know, she was butt naked. She she said she was hot in some place, but she was butt naked, I'm sure. <laughs> why, you, why are you so sure of that? <laughs> then it's full of the honeys with him. You know what I'm saying? I, I, in my in my mind, that's that's I that's mean, what I'm picturing in my mind. Like, 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 like you know, like the scene in Notorious when 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 Faith busts down Faith the door and Biggie uh-huh. had the two chicks. The, yeah, 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 that that that's that's yeah. what I was picturing in my head. Like Rodman had two chicks in his bed, and he had Carmen Electra in the same room. All right, I can see. I mean, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. I I I I, 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 I envisioned I envision a couple of butt naked Jones in the bed with a little with some drugs and. Alcohol, yeah. and pills, and shit, cocaine. You know what? You know, I, I, I did, I did a vision. Yeah, I was, yeah, I, I did some lines. Too. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, sir. Some yak. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. as far as Robin goes, man, um, I don't think he gets enough credit for the type of player he was when he actually went on the court, and I, I, I think, um, I think the antics did him a little, a bit of a disservice. Um, I liken him into uh, the battle rap of daylight because um, the dude is when it comes down to playing basketball, the dude is nice. Uh-huh. He's I mean he's he's dead nice. Um, yeah, he's he's like he's, he's a rebound king. Uh, but he's a good basketball player. I, I I don't even know if I want to just keep calling him 
the rebound, like he's nice, like mm-hmm. he's nice, nice, and um, yeah. I, I think we don't give him enough enough credit for being nice as a all around basketball player and not just you know the rebound, the rebound king as right. as as they put it. So um, I I just like the idea that they and they talked about how he they they um, depended on him while Pippen was out. And yep. um, you know, and he had to be the you know that that second that second man that second man up, and you know for all intents and purposes he delivered. I mean he kept them in, you know, excuse me, in the hunt. You mm-hmm. know, in, in, in as far as standings go, while Pippen was out, and then you know obviously Pippen came back, and the rest is history. But I just really uh, think I'm, I'm glad that the documentary documentary highlighted that. Uh, how good of a basketball player he was! I think they, mm. I think they did a good job yeah. of highlighting how good of a basketball player he was. And I, and I, and I think I missed this, but um, someone said that he was talking about the art of rebounding and he and kind of how he broke yeah. that down. Oh, so man. like a science, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, and yeah. I'm sitting here and I, so. looked at, I just happened to look at his stats um, Sunday, and I'm looking at the dude who was. One year he was averaging like fifteen and six, he was averaging like fifteen and sixteen rebounds in some years. Yeah. I'm like just, I'm like, yeah. but the dude could defend. He could, he could, he defend, could defend. Like, he could he could defend yeah. every position. He literally could defend every position on the court. Mm-hmm. He literally right. could do and that. And I think back, and I think back then for a guy his size, and I don't know, you know, what his weight was at the time. He was like six, but seven, when you like two, I think he was like two thirty, something like that. Maybe, maybe not even that heavy. I was gonna say he didn't look that heavy to me, but I'm just saying, like in comparison to some of the big men back in in those days, for him to average that many rebounds a season in comparison to guys like the Dream Ewing. Um, I'm, I'm missing somebody, yeah. but you know, it was a big man's league back then, and for him to, you know, be that guy in the paint, you know, mopping up, doing the dirty work and all and that, break it down uh, it's pretty why remarkable. He's doing it. And he can break down it, why exactly. he's doing it. That, that, that's what's yeah. crazy. That's what's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah. Bananas. Yeah. That, that, that's what's yeah. amazing about this guy. Uh, oh. one of the 50 greatest players, right? He, he made that list, right? Did he? I, I believe he did. I don't. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I didn't. If he did, I didn't know. I believe he did. I used to have a poster of the fifty greatest players. Uh, I don't, well, don't know what yeah. happened to it. So, but yeah. I, I'm sure I could research it. I'm not going to do that right now. When they going uh, to do that list over again? Or they probably not going to do that list. At one hundred, I guess at one hundred, right? Did they, didn't they do that like the fiftieth anniversary of the NBA? Yeah, yeah. Is that why? Maybe did the fifty? Yeah. Okay. So okay. does that mean yeah. they're gonna do it at seventy five? Um, I would like to see a seventy five only yeah. because we we not guaranteed to see the one hundred list. Yeah. <laughs> but uh I, I would like to see the seventy five at some point. Um that that's probably coming up pretty soon. Yeah, if it hasn't come up already. Cause that was yeah. in the nineties. Yeah. That was in the nineties, wasn't it? That was in the nineties. Yeah, that was probably maybe late nineties. And if you're talking late nineties, then we're are, are approaching, you know, twenty four, twenty five years later. So that that seventy five, that list of seventy five should be coming. Yeah, it should be. I tell you what, we should do. Um, I don't know if you're up for this idea. I, sh- I I'll go ahead. I'll pull out the list of who made the fifty greatest, uh-huh. and then we can kind of. Add our twenty five to the seventy five, and 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 see you know kind of predict who we think twenty five greatest players in NBA history. Well, if we do that, then I want to be able to take. What, what, what you think about? Um, if we, um, I don't know if I can do that in a week, but I'm with it. And uh, if we do that, I want to be I want to be able to take some people out of that seventy five too. We gotta get some internet. Can you hit you there? <sighs> yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, I, I was saying. I, I was saying. Hear. You could hear me. I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, you can hear me now. Okay. I was saying that. Um, if we do that, I want to be able to take some people out of that fifty too. 
Okay. I believe we've okay, had, yeah. I, I believe since that 50, we have witnessed over 25 players that are better than that that 50 list. So we can okay. be, we should be able okay. to add and take some people out, I believe. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm 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 up for game for that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm with yeah. I, so, I, that's that that'll be interesting. Uh, uh-huh. Angry, thank you, Angry Black Man. Right on time. Rodman was not on the top fifty. He wasn't. Okay. Okay. All right. I didn't know, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't know, but it didn't seem like he would be on that list. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Appreciate that, ABM. Yeah. Pre- appreciate that. Um, what's going on to you, by the way? Uh, while while we're there, um, I did see Jungle Brother say Phil Jackson was an overrated coach. He didn't have the sense to know that Rodman wasn't going to make it back on time and that Phil Jackson is so stupid he'll lend a crackhead money. Okay. Come on, Wi-Fi. I'm the, I can hear you. You can't hear me? Oh, you're watching it. You must be watching your Wi-Fi go out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I, I, I'm, I, I wish I had... had I wish I had control over this, but I, I really don't. No, 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 it's <laughs> but fine. You, you, was, you, you was reading um you was reading Jungle Brothers comment about uh what was it, Jackson being an overrated coach? Yeah, he been him being an overrated coach, not knowing that Robin wasn't gonna come back in time and that uh Phil Jackson is stupid, he'll end a crack I guess that was a joke. Um, right, right. Well, well, I do wanna say that I do agree with Jungle Brother in a sense that um Jackson is an over an overrated coach, and here's why I say that. Um, we we've talked about many times the NBA is sort of the it's a player's game. So you know you're, you're not going to win championships without good or great players. Mm-hmm. And Bill Jackson came in, and he had Michael Jordan, and he had Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman, and Rodman and a few others. Mm-hmm. All all Phil Jackson had to do was not mess it up. And the, and the same thing with the Lakers. He had Kobe and Shaq and Derek Fisher and Rick Fox and those guys. Championship caliber team. Phil, just don't mess it up. Just 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 manage manage the personalities to the best way you know how. And that's it. And he and he did that very well. He he did a great job at not messing up championship <laughs> caliber teams. Maybe maybe with the exception of that 0-4 team. But so, other than that, um, just to, I mean, because be honest, I never thought about, I never rated uh, Phil Jackson, but just for the sake of a conversation, um, mm-hmm. how much stock? First of all, how much stock did you put into being able to manage those types of um, personalities, specifically Jordan, specifically Kobe, um, and even Shaq and and hell, even Rodman, who in the of course yep. the documentary they they built like a a zen like friendship and and they were friends and related yeah, to right, like right. Indian Indian history, excuse me, Native American his, history and 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 they connected on that and like I I see I don't if I had to if I had to rate him and I don't know like are we nobody calls Phil Jackson well I guess some people do call him the greatest coach of all time. Let me say this. I have never thought of him as the greatest coach of all time. Um and if I got to think about it, um, Greg Popovich, um, mm-hmm. basketball-wise, at least that I've seen, Greg Popovich is the best. Um, yeah, because it's not – and, and again, this is no disrespect to Phil. Let me get to the shits. Is he a top five coach of all time? Um, I believe he is. I believe he's top five. Um, if he's number five, then okay. Or number four, okay. I don't think he's number one. How's he overrated if he, if he's top five of all time? Um, well, I, I was going to bring up Popovich, right? So we've seen Greg Popovich coach some, maybe not championship caliber Spurs teams, but we've seen him coach... Some teams where you're like, okay, this team is we not really get, like. You see him get bum teams to the playoffs on numerous occasions, and and, and right, and that's my point. Yeah. Like you, you see, and I, and and I'm not calling Lamarcus Aldridge a bum, but we have seen him take Lamarcus Aldridge and the Mar DeRozan and those guys go to the playoffs. 
on you, you know, you know what I'm saying? On any and, and take it how you want to take it. On any team where Lamarcus Aldridge or Demar Derozan are your best players, and you get right. them to the playoffs, you're the best. You're the best coach of all time. You're the greatest coach of all time. And and, 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 and that's, that's my and, and, right. And that's my point. And that's my point. And when and also when you can get guys out of the international league, Ginobili. And and Parker and I know how you feel about Manu Ginobili. How do I um, feel about Manu Ginobili? But, oh, that he's in the he's in the Spurs system, and if he'd have played anywhere else, he'd be trash. You th- I said that. You didn't say that. Maybe I'm, I might be paraphrasing, but I think you feel like I think you feel like if Manu Ginobili was pl- pl- playing anywhere else other than San Antonio, that he wouldn't be as effective as he would be. Under the Popovich system, maybe later in his career, but not when he was in his prime. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe, yeah. maybe you're right. Talk, yeah, I've always, like, I've getting, always when, liked his game. Okay, because you know you're right. Maybe down the stretch of his career, I think maybe you said that then. Yeah, yeah, because because in the because for me and and I, yeah that that because that would be my criticism of him. Um, mm-hmm. He he might have mm-hmm. took too long to retire. That was my criticism okay. of him. <laughs> fair, fair, yeah. fair, fair point. <laughs> fair, fair point. Uh, so, so the question was, if if I think he's overrated, why would it be a top five coach? Well, let's let's throw some names out there. You you threw out Greg Popovich. Who who else is a who else was a great coach? You you want to go uh, back? You know, back in the day. I mean, I can rem- I, I'm just going on coaches that I can remember. Uh, Lenny Wilkins was a good coach. Um, yep. Larry Brown was a good coach. Um, yep. Pat Riley. Uh, Pat, Pat Riley, Riley was a great coach. Was a great coach. Um, yep. Yep. Um, um, how you feel about Don? I think Don Nelson was a good coach. I, don't, I mean, he would have put him. I wouldn't put him in the top five. Dwayne Casey is no. Uh, I w- I, Dwayne Casey is a good coach. He's not top five, mm-hmm. but he, he's a he's a good coach. Um. Shit, I think I think like Dwayne Casey is a top five coach of all time. Is that what he said? No, no, no. He said under the under the logic that Pop getting Demar Derozan teams to the team to the playoffs, and Dwayne Casey is a top five coach of all time. Nah, it, it, it it's not just that Demar Derozan. I mean, that wasn't the only. No, that that bad. wasn't. Yeah, that wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't the point. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, see, this, this is what ABM be doing all the time. Like he'll, like, like you be answering questions that he be asking, and then he'll just take that one subject and be like, "So under this logic, then da 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 da." No, then, no, it, then, it, it, it don't work like that. Well, <laughs> well then even more to, well, more than, and then even more than that, Dwayne Casey was in the Eastern Conference too. So it's like they, they, you know, what I'm saying we we can't forget that that. Well, let me say I can't forget that dynamic. That the Eastern Conference, for the majority of my life of watching basketball, has not been a good conference of competition in basketball because they always get their bottom half is consistently under five hundred. The majority mm-hmm. of their bottom half is consistently under five hundred. So Major- um, the majority of the time, yes, yeah. So the majority of the time, and yes. that's just in my, you I, know, what I'm saying I'm I'm younger I'm younger than some of the folks. I don't know how old ABM is, but I'm younger than some of our listeners. So. Um, yeah, ABM, ABM, OG though. Yeah, so I, 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 I give him he, he an OG. So I'm, 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 I'm gonna learn from the OG. So, um, what, yeah, what he so, got here? Uh, Pop had Duncan, Robinson, Ginobili, and Parker, all Hall of Fame players. Let's not act like he didn't coach top talent. Pop brought his ass down to coach when they got Duncan. I'm just saying. What's what's the point? That. Um, and they still had garbage teams, though. I mean, like they 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 also had they had Tony Parker. Yeah, they, when, had, they had Tony Parker. Right. I mean, while he did have Tony Parker and Ginobili in their prime, and obviously Duncan the Hall of Famer, they also right. had Ginobili and Parker when they weren't so good. Right, they, like <laughs> toward the end of their toward the end of their careers, yeah. they had, and they had they some those, teams. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, they I mean, had they, they had was, the Tiago splitters and the the Tiago splitters, the the Patty Mills the and the Murray's, and the Boris Diaw. Yeah, yeah, right. They, they had yeah they they've had those players years and in the Western Conference, we we talked about conferences here yeah. in the Western Conference, they made the playoffs with that roster. Man, so, Dun- Duncan is definitely so yes. a Hall of Fame. Is is Genovia a Hall of Famer? 
I guess by ring. Yeah, I they be, gotta I, be Hall of Famers. I, I, I yeah, believe, they gotta be. Yeah, I believe. They gotta be, yeah. Him yeah. and Parker gotta be. I, yeah, I, they gotta be. Oh, absolutely. I just, never, absolutely. I just never heard nobody say, because I, you know, I don't be thinking about shit until somebody said it to me. And so, Ginobili, he just said that Ginobili and Parker was Hall of Famers. And it, it was like, all right. But yeah, they are. They are. You're right. They Hall of Famers. No, they're Hall of Famers. Yeah, they, and, yeah, and, they and no, are. and ABM, and ABM is right about that because we talked about Phil having. Hall of Fame players, Pop had Hall of Fame players also, and and again, I'm I'm just talking talking about championship teams, and for the most part, throughout the history of the NBA, you you need Hall of Fame players to win titles. Well, there's probably one, stars? right? There, there's probably one or two exceptions in my lifetime, and that's the Detroit Pistons in '04. And possibly the Mavericks in 2011. Those might be the only two uh, anomalies, well, or, or maybe you might throw in a rap. But well, that's true. Now. That's yeah, true. That's true. true. But the Pistons, or, 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 yeah. the Pistons for certain. And and I don't know if people throw the Raptors in that. What Raptors? In that category, huh? What Raptors? The, the, these past Raptors. In the past in, Raptors, yeah. It's only one Raptors yeah, oh, yeah, title, right, right, so. Right, right. Well, so, then, then that depends on how you feel about Kawhi, but right, which I, which right now I think he's Hall he's of on, Fame tra- on that trajectory, right, of right. being a Hall of Fame player. Yes, he, yes. Right. So, but, but the Pistons are no four for certain. Yeah, you had that one anomaly, but other than that, you have to have Hall of Fame players to win championships. So, and the yeah. coach, coach these teams, the championships. You, you, obviously, they had to have those players now. When they don't have these players, and maybe they have some down times, and maybe they still somehow win 45, 50 games and, you know, could still get their teams, you know, to the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Pop is in that category. I don't know that Phil is in that category. I don't know that when Phil has Phil had to coach some not so championship caliber teams that he was able to, you know, get that team to the postseason. All right, so here we are in a tangent. Let's 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 do this right now. We got we got a couple of lists. We got a couple of names for uh, coaches. And okay. Let's see. Let's see if we can kind of get get uh, get a, a ranking on Phil. Uh, so in my mind, Pop is number one. We agree. Pop number one. Okay. Yeah. And I'm talking about me we and you. I'm just, I'm just. Yeah, we can, we, we can do that. Yeah, well, we let's can do say that. this. Well, let's say this. We won't rank them. Is Pop okay. better than Phil Jackson? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is mm-hmm. Doc Rivers better than Phil Jackson? Yes. Okay, that's two. Is yes. Chuck Daly better than Phil Jackson? Mm, I don't know. I know. Okay. I, w- I, w- I wouldn't give it to Chuck Daly. No. Is Pat Riley better than Phil Jackson? Yes. Okay. Is who else we got here? Lenny Wilkins. Is Lenny Wilkins better than uh, uh, Phil Jackson? I would say no. Uh, Lenny Wilkins, no, no. And, and Lenny Wilkins is a good coach. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the, but yeah. I don't. But I don't think he's better than Phil. Um, I don't know who the hell Casey Jones is. I'm not going to lie to you, Jungle Brother. I, I just don't know who he is. Um. Uh, Red Auerbach is ABM's. Uh, okay, oh, Red Ar- Okay, this is his five. Uh, I'm assuming this is his five. Um, uh-huh. Riley, Pat Riley, Chuck Daly, Greg Popovich, Phil Jackson, and Red Auerbach. I'm assuming this is his five. Okay, okay. No, that that that's a good five. I ain't got enough. That's I ain't got enough on Red Auerbach. I know he got some some chips, but you went with the Celtics back when yeah. Russell was playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But I, I mean, yep, but yep. I'm still not privy to who he was as a coach. Though is what I'm saying. Got you. Yeah. I'm not either, but yeah. I I understand his point. Yep. Um, and ABM says, "Hell no, nah, Doc Rivers. Doc Rivers is not better than um than Phil Jackson." Hmm. Okay. I've I, I've seen Doc Rivers take some teams to the playoffs. Now he's blown a lot of you know three one three two leads. That's a fact. But but but. He's took it. What he he took that Orlando team with McGrady and uh, and Grant Hill to the playoffs. But obviously the big three in Boston and 
He got the he got the chip. Yeah, he's got one Boston. chip. He got the one chip in Boston. Um, he got the how, one chip in Boston. How, how do you feel about um, the Clippers? Like his his running the Clippers. Um, him running the Clippers his like running, in a GM role? No, no, no his run, oh. his career. Oh. as a coach. Of the Clippers. Um, no, I I I think it's a good run. Um, it, I mean, he needs to win a title. Um, I don't. I'm not saying he needs to win a title to cement his legacy. I'm just saying it would be nice for him to finally get the chip with the Clippers. I mean, that that would be something um, legendary. I think, given you so know under, the history of the franchise. So under the argument that we need Hall of Famer status or All Stars, um, uh-huh. has Doc Rivers ever had? A all like a that that player on his on a team where mm-hmm. he should be winning chips. Um, cause my thing is, um, cause how do you feel about Kevin Garnett? How do you feel about Paul Pierce? Right, right, and you're and you're and you're talking about when he got those guys when they were like in their prime, and if they weren't in their prime, they were probably probably crossing that peak yeah. of being in their prime. Like they were they were on their way to, you know, being, you know, downhill. They they were on their way. Um I got I gotta go back to the Orlando teams and had the injuries not happen to guys like McGrady and Grant Hill, you you you, you might be talking about a championship caliber team with those guys. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. You know? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know either. But the tra- but but the trajectory but of those agree. guys were yeah. But we but we I think we all agree. agree. I think we all agree that he's a top five coach though. I think I, I, and I think that's what we were trying yeah. to. Yeah, to me, yeah, he's, he's a top he's five a top five, five coach. Of all time, of all time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think yeah, that, and and I and I and I and I get MB, uh, ABM in the chat. He says Orlando never won a series under Doc Rivers. That's a fact. Orlando never won. Never won a series, and so far with the Clippers, they've underachieved. I, I I I agree with that, and that's why I said I think just to enhance his legacy already, and plus to maybe do something legendary, bring the Clippers a title. Um, that that would like to me, I I can't take him out the top five. Okay. If if he was to ever win a title with the Clippers, I I, I can't. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't want. I don't want stretches no longer than we already stretched that conversation, but we do have. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, run, yeah, I'm running out of I'm running out of uh, stuff for NBA. So uh, if you want to get to the draft, then we, we could definitely uh, you know get to the draft and what we saw right. Thursday night. So um, the draft was Thursday night. How did you feel about with the the, vir- the the first ever virtual draft? Um, I tell you what, I think it's nice to see families. Um, you know, celebrate. I also think it's nice to see funny things in the living rooms of these, you know, players and their families and stuff. Um, first off, let me let me let me give a shout out to all the white girls that's trying to get their bag with these athletes, man. Because you know, yeah, I, I, they they need a shout out, man. Because I, I I think what and and I think we know this already. I think I think we know that there's a stereotype that um, you know black athletes with white women has sort of become this kind of thing going on, right? So the fact that this draft was virtual and we finally got to see, you know, consistently not just one player here, another player here. We got to see that with almost every player that got drafted, you know, in this draft. I didn't notice that. What's that? I didn't notice a lot of white girls with with black well, no, 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 no. Oh. I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying, because you know how um, regularly in the draft, these guys are at the draft okay. in the in the in, in the auditorium. In the auditorium, okay. Right. So finally, what this virtual draft has shown us is is that every player is at home quarantined, watching their name being called, and they're sitting with their families and friends and oh, oh. girlfriends and all, all that stuff. So it was more noticeable to see there. the black athletes and in you know and in some cases you saw all the white girls you know clinging on to their guys and all that stuff like did you like did you see um and, and i forget who the name of the player was but um his girl i guess it was his girl she she was a white girl 
she was hugging she was hugging him after he got got his name called and other was trying to get her to get up off of him I didn't and see she that. just kept holding on real tight I didn't see that and so the mother yo yo no 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 joke mom dukes yanked her up out of the screen and was like, yo, you need to give my boys this shine. Because, you know, the camera's on him. Mm-hmm. And she was all like, like she was all up in the camera and all that. Like while trying to hug him. Yeah. And Mom Dukes was like, nah, yo, you you like she yanked you, she yanked her up out of there. Like like straight gangster stuff, yo. Yeah, I, yeah, I got I I'm I'm gonna get the name of the player for you, man. But that that was that was funny. That 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 right was funny. And then um the other instance, and I don't I don't I don't know if the I don't think the girl was white per se. But um, C.D. Lamb, who got drafted with the Dallas Cowboys, yeah. right? Uh, his girl was next to him. He got his name called. He, I think he had two phones in his two hand. Phones, yeah, he know. had, right. And then his girl picked up the phone, and then he was like, nah, yo, like, give me my phone back. Like, <laughs> like, like two seconds yeah, after yeah. she took his phone. So, it, it, like, it, it's so crazy because it's so crazy because, you, you know, you, you're seeing, like, these athletes, significant others, and you know, I, I got to shout out the white girls, man, because you know well, they 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 out, they out to get. No, 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 she wasn't white. I'm okay. just saying in general, in, in general, <laughs> right, right. So you know, she, you know, shout out, shout out to them, man. They they, they trying to get their bag, man. They trying to, you know, see th- this is a thing, man, with with females, right? So, oh, hey, Maestro, yeah, Maestro, I'm here. That's you going out. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's you, bro. Yeah, I, 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 I don't, <laughs> let me, let me be the first to say that I don't, I'm not actually going to shout out those, those particular white girls. Um, and that's a part of a whole, uh, a whole epidemic that's going on in, in athlete, in athletes, um, uh, and sports. Hey, hey, yeah. uh, I, hey, I, 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 I guess they didn't want me talking about white women. Yeah, that's I why was, I got I was, shut up. Oh, I was, I was just, I was just, uh, <laughs> rebuking that message. I don't want to shout those white girls out. <laughs> <laughs> not those, not those oh, particular man. white girls. But I mean, because that's a whole, right. that's a whole thing that we won't get into about why players or athletes feel like they need to get that. That I don't, I don't think they, I don't think they think they need to get it. This is what I think happens. I think what happens uh-huh. is is that when they get into these, you know, these athletic circles and all that, it's not a whole bunch of black women there when it comes to trainers and 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 you know, publicists and all mm-hmm. that. It ain't a whole bunch of black girls there. So you normally um, you'd be surprised how high the rate is of dudes that date or or people that date, you know, people that's within their jobs. They just see them all the time. So you, yeah, right. see, you see these these white girls, and after a while, it's like, oh, all right, you here, I'm here, I'm horny, you horny, mm-hmm. let's get it popping, and next thing you know, she's pregnant. Yeah, right, I right. That I, don't, so I don't think it'd be so much all the time. I don't think it'd be so much that, you know... Now, I do think some... I do believe that there are women, white, black, and indifferent, that uh, be out here, you know, clocking. You know, I do think that that's the thing yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. I do think that uh, that's the thing too. Yeah, um, it's it's called financial security. Yeah, for the, you know, for, yeah. for some women. So, so um, and, and really, quite frankly, quite frankly, whether whether you're a hoe, whether you were a housewife, any woman is always for that financial security. Well, so I, I can't what, just say it's just if, the hoes. So. If if the business agreement works for both parties, then it's good business. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. That's all yeah, it but, is, man. But but hey. draft. <laughs> but no, side note, I I got the I got the name of that player. Uh Isaiah Wilson um was the player that got drafted and his girlfriend was in the video gotcha. hugging him and that's when his mama, you know, came and yanked her up out of the screen. So gotcha. Isaiah Wilson. I promise I won't look it up, but Isaiah Wilson. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just don't remember what team drafted him. And don't worry, I'll I, forget. I'll forget by the time the episode is done. So, <laughs> no worries. Yeah. And and one more and one more note. Um, C C D Lamb's girl that was sitting next to him bad. during the draft. Bad, bad. Um, um, well, yes. Um, she used to go out with Trey Young because Trey Young was um putting up some pictures up on uh, Twitter the same night, oh, and shit. you know. It, 
Yeah, yeah. And, and Katz was like, yo, Trey, yo, that's your, that's your old squeeze, right? And Trey was like, yeah, I used to, I used to go out with her, whatever. So, hey, so man. I was like, yo, like, so she, so she, she trying to get her, get herself a baller. She's trying man. to get shows. Don't hate, don't hate. She's trying to get shows. Uh, 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 no hate at all. Maybe she, she, she like, maybe she was hey, really she attracted like a to both guys. guy. Yeah, maybe she really was attracted to both guys. She like a certain type of guy. I, I ain't mad at her. I, I ain't mad. So, um, <laughs> to, uh, well, let's 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 deal with my, our teams first because that's more interesting to me. How do you feel about what the Ravens did? Um, I thought the Ravens had the best draft um, out of everybody. Okay. Um, Pat, Patrick Queen in the first round out of LSU. Um, I didn't see it. I didn't see it coming, but. I was like, okay, that a pretty good pick. Uh, um, watched a little bit of a little bit of film on him. I mean, LSU was on TV a lot, you know, over the over the past season. Um, national cha- champions, by the way, LSU. Um, so, you know, I love that pick. And then we was able to pick up a wide receiver in the second round. Um, some offensive line help. Um, I mean, really, the the interesting thing with the Ravens right now is is they got so many players already on the roster that they really could have went whatever direction you know they wanted to minus the quarterback spot, um, and and it re- so it really didn't matter. So we and we also also got that running back um, Dobbins. Mm-hmm. I forget his first name. Um, we got Dobbins out the second round too. So you know that's going to be a pretty big steal for us. But um, overall, man. Um, I, I didn't have no problems with how they went about the draft. I really yeah. didn't. Yeah. Um, getting into the Steelers, uh, I am excited about Boogie McFarlane. <laughs> I am about ex- Booger McFarlane. Yeah, from Merlin. Okay. Um, I'm excited. That's I don't that's know if, son. I don't think so, but Boogie. I don't know if that's. You said. You said, you said Booger I said, McFarlane. I said Boogie McFarlane. Oh, Boogie McFarlane. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's first okay. name is Anthony, but, but okay. They, uh, but uh, uh, Boogie McFarlane from okay. Maryland. If, if if people don't remember, that's the guy who ran rough shot over. Uh, I think it was Ohio State, not this year, but the year before. Ran like three hundred mm-hmm. yards on him and three touchdowns on him, and damn near won him the game. Except for everybody else, on Maryland was trash. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but I'm excited about him. Uh, we got another safety from Maryland. I don't know. What I, I'm trying to figure out with this uh, with this love affair with Merlin is because we we tend to draft a lot out of Merlin, um, so I, I, I'm 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 going to Google that. I just didn't have a chance to Google Anthony, it, huh? Anthony McFarlane. Anthony McFarlane. Anthony McFarlane. Yeah, Boogie McFarlane. Yeah. Okay. Anthony, yeah. Okay. 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 Is, is he related to Booger McFarlane? I I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But oh, um, I don't. But they seem that they. We also drafted a safety out of Merlin, and I don't know. I, it just seems like we drafted that out of Merlin. I, I, I just, I just want to know if there's some type of relationship. I'm gonna Google that because I didn't get a chance to Google it um, before we mm-hmm. got on. I'm cool with the draft. Um, we we got a receiver in the second round, Claypool from uh, Notre Dame, and everybody. Notre Dame, yeah. Yeah, everybody loves him. I don't know nothing about him, um, and I haven't had a chance mm-hmm. to do any research on him. Um, mm-hmm. everybody said, but everybody seems to love him and he's a stiller. He was a stiller when he was in college and all, you know, all the shit they'd say to gas you. Um, mm-hmm. so, but mm-hmm. we addressed, we addressed the needs, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. early and I'm, I'm, and I'm okay with that. I would, um, we got a, a pass, we got a new pass rusher and, you know, but we address needs and, and, and I, we didn't, there wasn't a point where I felt like we didn't address a need and that's all I'm. I really be looking for because half the time I'm gonna keep it a bean. When you get past the mm-hmm. second and third round, I don't be knowing these niggas. You know what I'm saying? I I, I don't be knowing yeah, these no, niggas. Yeah, absolutely. So, no, um, but just to go down your list, right? Alex Highsmith out of Charlotte, mm-hmm. out of the third round for you guys. Uh, Kevin Dotson, the guard from Louisiana Lafayette. Um, Antoine Brooks. Is Brooks the, is the safety, safety from Maryland you're talking yeah. about. And uh, Carlos Davis out of Nebraska. Mm-hmm. He's a, a defensive. Yeah. So yeah, yo, I, I yo, don't know them niggas. Y'all had six picks. Y'all, y'all really had just six picks in the draft. Yeah. Oh snap. I mean, I, I, I mean, I know y'all got the first for Minka. I, I, I know that. Um, but damn. Yeah. I, I didn't know y'all. I, damn. Okay. I ain't going, and I ain't, like I said, we we got a young team, so it's like 
we got a young team, so it's like I, I'm cool with it. I, I, I would love to say, like, it's, it's funny because uh, Thursday after work, somebody came mm-hmm. and they called themselves trying to, you know, make a high. Y'all ain't got no fur. I'm like, bruh, I am. I have never been so satisfied with where the team is going than maybe right now. Outside of the fact that we don't know what we're going to do, uh, we don't know what we're going to do in two years with Ben Roethlisberger retires. That's it. Mm-hmm. But everything else, we, right. we we got it. We got it on lock for the next two or three years, um, and we'll deal with the Ben Roethlisberger situation um, maybe next year in the draft, or you know what I'm saying. Uh, I don't know right, what's right. going to happen, but uh, but we'll deal with it then. Uh, sticking with while we're still in the draft situation, um, I know we talked about it last um, week. One more thing. Um, J.K. Dobbins, um, running back out of Ohio State. That's the guy we picked up in the second round. Uh-huh. I, I, I just I, I forgot the first guy's name, but but J.K. Dobbins out of Ohio State yeah. um, had a pretty good year last year. We got another guy out of Ohio State, Malik Harrison, a linebacker. Um, so you know uh, we, we're pretty stacked right now. Yeah. But, but getting to the other parts of the draft, right? I guess the, um, some, some highlight some highlight pickups. Um, obviously, uh, C.D. Lamb being going to Dallas is going to be crazy. Um, that's going to be yeah. crazy. Um, yeah. Uh, I got to get to this, though. Yeah. I, I, I got to get to this because this is, to me, this is this is the biggest, biggest story of the draft to me. Jordan Love getting drafted by the Packers. The Packers moved up, I think, a spot or two to get him, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um. Aaron Rodgers has, at the most, two years before they decide it's Jordan Love's time. Um, And I know people are are trying to compare when Aaron Rodgers was drafted years ago, when Brett was still on the team. The difference is, is that these quarterbacks that are being drafted nowadays, these guys are starting right away. And... They got these rookie salaries, and so you got these kids on contracts, you know, four four year contracts. Sometimes four years with that fifth year option attached to it. So I don't see how Jordan Love is going to sit for three years, and then all of a sudden the Packers are scrambling to try to you know pay this guy. Um, I, I I I don't I don't see how that's gonna you know gonna fly. So that's why I'm saying. I, I give give Jordan Love uh, um, two years before he he um you know before he's able to um, take over for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Well, um, what what do you think about that? I still think this that's so. Are you saying are you saying that picking up Jordan Love was not a good thing? No, I'm. I think it's a great thing. I'm right. just saying that. I'm just saying that the notion that this is going to be. The, um, Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers. I, I don't think it's going to be that. I, I think I, the the way Brett Favre was able to hold off Rodgers for three years, Aaron, Rod- Aaron Rodgers ain't going to be able to do that. It, it, is my point. Um, I, I, I think at the most, you don't think if you can give him two, you you said you can give Aaron Rodgers two years, but you can't give him three. And let's be clear, he's still no. playing top five quarterback football right now. No, I, I no, I I agree with that a hundred percent. I, I, I agree. It's 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 just that um it, it's just that the way contracts with rookie quarterbacks are nowadays, I don't think teams want to invest money in a backup for three years and then he comes and starts the fourth year and all of a sudden you're you're scrambling trying to figure out, oh, okay, we gotta sign him to an extension. Um, you know, I don't think teams wanna do that anymore. Uh, I, but it's not like you're gonna have to pay Jordan Love big money. Cause he's been sitting for two years, three years. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it's not like so it's not like when it's time to re up Jordan Love, he's going to be on his first big contract. He's going to be on a minimal contract at best, and then based on performance, maybe we'll be talking about if he's going to be getting you know, quote unquote, Aaron Rodgers money. But I'm willing to bet that he's not going to be getting Aaron Rodgers money um, mm-hmm. on his first on his uh, second contract. He's going to be getting. Mid, he's going to be getting starter quarterback money. Probably he's going to be getting minimal starter quarterback money. 
Um, right. which is probably going to be like twenty. I, I, it might be by it might be thirty by then because niggas going to be making forty million dollars by then. But um, but he's going to be making starter quarterback money. But it's not going to be that the the max the max for lack of a better term. It's not going to be the big boy money. So they'll still have money mm-hmm. to build around Jordan Love when he's ready to start and give him the opportunity to play and earn in his third contract or his extension to earn that big boy money. But if he doesn't play that way, then then no harm, no foul, because you're not going to have to give him big money off the rip because he's not going to be playing sure. for half of his contract. Sure, and, and, and that's a good point. I just think that when you... You trade up to get the guy. I think what he was a no first round, right? He was he came first out, round. He, yeah, first round. First round. Yeah, I, I I just think that when you make that move, you're you're telling the franchise, yo, this is this is our nigga for you know the next ten years. Yeah. And I'm just and I'm just saying that just like Aaron Rodgers was. Aaron Rod, right? But that was a but my point is is I think it's a different time back then what it is now. Um, and not to compare this situation to um, what's happening in Green Bay, but Patrick Mahomes had to sit for one year before, you know, he was able to get on the field and, you know, do what he did. Now, the difference is, obviously, Alex Smith is not it, nowhere near the caliber of Aaron Rodgers. That's that's not what I'm trying to say. And, my point is, and, is and, that and, it's my point. I'm sorry. I, 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 mean to, I meant to cut you off, but, but to add to the point, we uh-huh. know Jordan Love didn't. Jordan Love is not coming into the league looking like Patrick Mahomes did when he came into the league. Of course, of course not. And, just and, and, off, and just again, all tape. Like this man was on his knees throwing seventy yards in in uh, scouts and and you know what I'm saying like they of course they, like this was the way they when they drafted Patrick Mahomes and when they drafted Patrick Mahomes they knew for a fact that mm-hmm. if there was a situation to get Alex Smith out of there they were going to get him out of there. That's oh, of course. The, that's not the case and, and, with, uh, right. with and, 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 and Rodgers. Right, and, and to my point, that's not um, – the, the, the two situations are uncomparable. I think but they're I exactly think, the same. You said you think they're the same? I think the Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers situation is exactly the oh, same. Oh, no, no, no. I was talking – no, no, no. I was talking about the Mahomes-Smith versus the okay. Rodgers-Love thing. That's okay. what I was saying it is uncomparable. Okay. But I think But I think over the last several years, teams that have gone in the first round at quarterback, they trying to get these dudes on the field, whether, whether they got to sit for one year or at the most two years. I, my prediction again, and and this is just basing off of what's going on, and I get that Aaron Rodgers is still playing at a high level. Um, probably not at this past year. Probably not vintage Aaron Rodgers, but still good Aaron Rodgers. I give him two years, man. Two years, and then either they either they gonna say find a team that we could trade you to, or you know. Aaron Rodgers may just, you know, may may just fall off. I, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen. But I don't, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I, I, I think what's going to end up happening is, is that um, he's under this contract, right? He's getting about thirty something million dollars. Yeah, that, that was and not, think, that's what I was going to say. I think the only reason, the only way that your situation comes into play is if is right. he's if is if is he's going to have if is I don't know. I don't, I know my English is somewhere fucked up somewhere in there. If he has to re up in two years, then mm-hmm. I can see Aaron Rodgers being gone. And 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 that's and that's sort of my point. But I, I think but it's gonna, he it's won't be gone to... if he got three years on his contract. He'll be there for three years. If Aaron Rodgers after when it's if it's two years, Aaron Rodgers decides and says, "Hey, you know what?" Which I doubt it, it'll happen. But if you say, "You know what?" Right. You know, just pay me what y'all could pay me. You know, what I'm saying I want to try to get a title. Woo, 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 mm-hmm. I want to play. I want to end my career as a Packer. Um, yep. if he takes that pay cut, they're going to keep him, and Jordan Love is going to sit on the bench. Mm. We'll see. I mean, if he's still playing at the level that we believe he's going to be still playing at, they're right? Going to keep, they're going to keep him if they can keep him at a price. Um, but <laughs> like I said, I don't. But I don't see Aaron Rodgers playing into his forties. So that's 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 just the thing. Okay, I, I could see him playing into his forties. Not because he won't be capable. I don't like when you look at him. Don't you? I, when you look at him play, 
Don't it? Right. Still, don't it? I mean, to me, I won't say. I won't try to convince you. To me, it looks like he's still playing at a high level, but it don't look like he. That same fire ain't there when back when he was a young cat. Like he just out here. No, of course not. He just of out here not. doing it. He just doing it because he know he's capable of doing it at a high level, and he's getting of course paid not. for it. But I don't, I don't uh, think. Uh, it's, of course not. Yeah, that Bama man. I think. I think. Listen, I, I think. think I think years. that. I think at everything least. is on. The t- I think. I think anything and everything is on the table right now. Let's say. Two years from now, Aaron Rodgers, he ends that particular season and the contract is in a situation now where if you decide to, let's say you cut him or let's say you trade him, then that cap hit is not going to be as enormous as it would be if you to cut him a year or two earlier. If Belichick is still coaching the Patriots and he doesn't like what he sees with this, you know, Jared Stidham cat. You don't you don't think the Patriots are going to look at Aaron Rodgers and be like, yo, we we just a quarterback away. We got some pieces, but we just a quarterback away. You you don't think the Patriots are going to look at Aaron Rodgers and be like, yo, we we, we had a we had a 40 year old Tom Brady. We, 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 we could deal with a 40 year old Aaron Rodgers. Sure, They would ask, but they're not going to get Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers won't break the bank. They're not independent quarterbacks. Mm, well, yeah, good point. Good point. They didn't. They didn't want to pay Brady. But, I, mean, I, I, mean, I, get, I get what you're saying. That would be a good. That would be a. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. But but he's not going to be taking a hometown discount, quote unquote. I know he's not from Boston. At least I don't think Brady from right. Boston. But he's not going to be coming in and talking about yeah, we 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 going to give you 25. We going to give you 20 mil. Nah, he going to mm-hmm. want to get paid like he was getting paid because of what he's done. Right. Because of what he's done. Because of his his experience. Mm-hmm. So um, right, right, but yeah, but I'm but I'm with you. I don't want to stretch this. Uh, another well another... prediction, well prediction. Okay. What, what, what your your prediction? Your prediction of Jordan Love. What 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 happens to Jordan Love while he's a Packer? Your um, prediction. He's definitely going to. Gonna, with with that said, I don't I don't think it's going to be. Nah, um, can't hear him. You can't oh, hear me again. Okay. I, I didn't hear you. You you broke up for a minute there. What'd you okay. say? Um. With that, I think that Jordan Love is going to play in two to three years. With that being said, but if he plays in the two to three years, it won't be because um, they just decided, "Hey, we up and done." It's going to be because of money. It's it's going to be because of money or because okay. Aaron Rodgers retired. Okay. But it won't be okay. because Aaron Rodgers is still going to be uh, a top ten quarterback in two years. Okay. So it's not like okay. it's not like at year at year at love year two they gonna look at Rodgers and be like Rodgers ain't that dude no more. We need to make a change. I don't think that's what's gonna happen. I think if it happens in two years, it's gonna uh-huh. be because of some type of a money situation or Aaron Rodgers not gonna okay. play no more. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 kind of looking at it the other way. I, I'm I'm we're in agreement in terms of the years. Um, two you say two to three. I'll I'll stick with my, I'll stick with my two years but I'm gonna say it's gonna be because they drafted the guy in the first round I think it's I think they made it clear that at some point they want to make this guy the starter um it, it's gonna be because they want Jordan love on the field as the heir apparent to Aaron Rodgers do you think do you think they drafted Jordan love because he was the best available player or because they felt like they needed a replacement for Aaron Rodgers um, because he definitely wasn't the best available player. Um, and 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 that doesn't mean that um the, that 27, the Packers were drafting for need per se. Um, they could have still they could have elected to draft for need and went out and got a wide receiver or or, or possibly a tight end or running back or something like that. Well, they did um, back. But, they didn't need a but, they don't need a running. Well, back. that's why I said. Well, that's why I said or, or a tight end or or wide receiver. Oh. Uh, Skill position. They could have. Mm-hmm. They could have gone for a skill position if they were under the premise that they were going to draft for need. Um, but the reason I think that they drafted Jordan Love is because at some point they they want to move on um, from Aaron Rodgers, Once whether I it be to have to. Right, right. Whether it be because of a decline, whether it's due to money or what, but. I think that's you don't draft the guy number one to just have him sit on the bench three four years and then you 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 again you're, I hear you're you. ending up having to trade him unless unless you're Jimmy Garoppolo 
and, 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 more than, and more than that, Rogers. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, Rogers sat for exactly three years. He's, yeah, he 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 sat for three years. No no question think, about I, it. I don't think and and, and, and you know, different time. I, but I don't different. think it has to do with the times. I think it has to do with the type of who manages the team. And Ted Thompson is still Ted Thompson yeah. ain't there no more. Oh, you're right. He's not there no more. But um, yeah. He ain't there no more, but yeah. uh, but I think you I think you're seeing a pattern with the Packers um, in the last 15, 20 years. Um, they they have Hall of Fame quarterbacks mm-hmm. going back to Bart Starr, Brett Favre, and now Aaron Rodgers, and hopefully for their sake, Jordan Love. So I'm I'm kind of seeing a pattern with how they're doing this, except I think a little differently from. The Favre Rogers transition, I think the Rogers love transition may be a little quicker than the Favre Rogers transition. Yeah. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. How you but, feel about Jalen Hurts to Philly in the second round? At first, I thought Philly. I, at, at first, I thought Philly. Like wow. Like I, I, it, it, at first, it didn't quite make sense to me. But after you know thinking about it a few times, I was like, you know what. They they don't trust Carson Wentz's health, um, they and and like look, they, do, and, they paid him like they did. But when you look at the history, dude ain't been able to finish a season. Last year got hurt in the playoff game. Uh, the year prior, Foles had to come in and they made the playoffs, win a, win a game or two. And uh, you know the year prior to that, he gets hurt in the middle of the season, and, and Foles comes in and they win the Super Bowl. So you've had three consecutive years where he's come off the field and hasn't returned. So I I think there's something to the Jalen Hurts um, to the pick in the second round. I, I I really think there's something to that, and it has to do with the health of Carson Wentz. I I really feel that way. I've seen reports via Bleach Report that they are talking about implementing a two quarterback system next year. And I've mm-hmm. also saw, uh, saw uh, st- same Bleach report that they also talked about using him as a running back. Mm-hmm. Man, they better not, man. That's what and, I'm and saying. That's why, like, and, that's and that's what, what why, and, and, and that's about. why, and that's why I was a little confused at first because I'm like, wait a minute, like Pittsburgh, the Saints, like I could, I could see those teams that's got veteran quarterbacks close to being on the way out. Jalen Hurts comes in, sits for a year or two, and eventually becomes a starter. Like, those teams made more sense. With Philadelphia, it didn't make sense off rip, but when you think about it, when you look at what the situation is with their current quarterback, and he's young, and he's got all this money, but the dude in the last three years hasn't been able to finish a game. I do not want to see Jalen Hurts be used in a wildcat situation. I do not want to see that. I don't want to see him even. I don't want to see a two quarterback system either. Yeah, I I, I don't want to see that. Make, but... make your call. Like make if if he's just if Wentz is your starter, he's your young starter. Then start him and then train the boy up and train the boy hurts up. You know, in case he got to be, uh, you know, in case he got to come out, in case he got to come out and be the starting quarterback for a couple of games. And you know, make his worth. And if he got to be traded soon, then he got to be traded soon. But that's just that's just that just is what it is. Yeah. But don't yeah. that two quarterback yeah. system, all that using him as a running back? Nah, man. Like cut cut that cut that black quarterback bullshit out. Like let him play quarterback. He's a quarterback. All that bullshit that y'all was that y'all used to do in the nineties with quarterbacks uh-huh. in college. When you're trying to, you know, use his athleticism, I'm using that in quotation marks. No, te- let him play quarterback. We, if you're going to play him as a quarterback, play him as a quarterback. You mm-hmm. don't need to be no running back, man. Yeah. No let, me running back. Up, let me say what up. Let me let me say what up to Miss Mocha Bella in the chat room. What's happening? Um. Also, also got the homie Jay Fish, the microwave from the next on, squad. Brother? What's popping? What's popping? I, yes, I just sir. want to read a couple comments here real quick. Uh, Jungle Brother says, so you forgot the year Rodgers was hurt and the Packers was dead in the water. Then he says the Packers traded up to get love. Rodgers' days are numbered. And also says this time next year, Rodgers will be gone from Green Bay. You jokers sound like his agent. Look, I ain't trying to be the man's agent. I'm just saying that when you pick a guy in the first round, you're telling me that that's the guy you want to be your future. 
you know, regardless of who you got at the helm right now. Yeah. So the way, so because Aaron Rodgers is still Aaron Rodgers, I'm gonna give the guy two years. I'm, I'm not gonna disrespect him and give him a half a year to one year. I, I'll give him two years, and if and if it turns out he's in a situation like what Brady was in with Garoppolo, and he's like, yo, like get get, get this guy up out of there, then 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 so be it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I, I... Yeah, let him develop him as a quarterback. Don't don't waste my time and put him in some type of a wildcat and all that. And you know, mm. let him be a quarterback. That that that's all I got to say as far as that. And I get I get he won't start over Wentz. You know, coming into the season, um, yep. you know, and that this is Wentz's job to lose. I, I get all that. But if that's the case, mm. that, that don't mean you you don't. I get you drafted him high. Develop him as a quarterback. Don't 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 yep. don't do all that all that other shit. Um, yeah, yeah, for real. Uh, one other one other comment here in the chat. Uh, microwave says uh, don't don't talk bad about about Wentz Trey. Hey, it, it's it's the facts, man. The, the guy doesn't finish the season. He, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what you want from me, man? Uh, so what you what you want? <laughs> Trent Williams. Um, Trent Williams finally got traded. From the Redskins got traded to the 49ers for a fifth round uh, in this in this draft that just happened, and a third mm-hmm. round in 2020 2021. So Trent Williams is finally out of Washington to the 49ers. Um, great, great job. pickup for yeah. the 49ers. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, did you hear that he turned down a deal with the Vikings to play with the 49ers? Uh, I did not hear that, and I'm going to assume it's because he doesn't want to play with Cousins. I'm, um, I'm just throwing that out there. I don't know if that's. I didn't even think that about that. I, I just thought that they he felt like the 49ers was a winning team, and the Vikings weren't going to the Super Bowl no time soon. So why not mm-hmm. go to a competitor as opposed to yeah taking the more maybe taking the better you know financial deal? And I don't know what the numbers were in the Vikings deal. But yep. if if I'm Trent Williams, I'm 30 year old Trent Williams who still got some, or you know at least we think he still has a uh, the capability of being one of the top tackles in the game. Um, yep. uh Let's let's go to a Super Bowl contender, man. Like he's 30 years old, so he he ain't got a whole bunch whole bunch more years left. He might you know he might have like five. Maybe five on him, maybe five six years on him to play. Yeah, I'd say about five years on him. And he didn't, he didn't play all last year, right? Yeah, he, he sat yeah. out, right? Yeah, he sat out. Oh yeah, the dude's gonna be fresh, man. He, he'll yeah. be all right. So, but he ain't young, is what I'm getting at. So no, I know he's not he young. Might. He's not young, but I think the year off is gonna help him if he's healthy. Yeah, play a few more. If he's I agree. healthy, I, agree. I think that helps him down the line. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree with you 100%. So, yeah, definitely shouts out to Trent Williams. We're glad. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad with way because with the way the Redskins treated him, um, you know, I'm glad he's with a young uh, team that seem to be doing things the right way, Super Bowl competitors. Um, I, I actually low-key hope they get back to the Super Bowl just so he has an opportunity to play for a champion, you know, play for a Super Bowl. Right, right. Definitely yeah. got, I've always um, had respect for Trent Williams. Yep, yep. Uh, Jameis Winston um, signs the one-year deal with the New Orleans Saints. Yeah. And I tell you what, man, um, I, I know a lot of people aren't happy about this. Um, I'm excited for Jameis Winston. And I know people are comparing, well, he could have signed a deal with Pittsburgh for a much more lucrative deal. Um, why do he have to go with the Saints? And I kind of compared the two situations, right? And I, and I text you about it, and I think, we, I think we're kind of coming from different um, perspectives. I mean, obviously, you were still a Steelers fan, so obviously you have a much better perspective than I do. Um, but the way I'm, I'm kind of looking at it is, is Jameis Winston wants to start. And I, and, I, and, I, and I think that in addition to having the best roster and, I, and you know, to your point, you think this, you know the Saints have a better roster than what Pittsburgh has at the moment. At least on offense. Um, on offense. Um, and I think in Jameis's head, he wants to start as quickly as, he's, as he possibly can. And how do you do that? 
Drew Brees is forty one years old, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. I know he's at least he's forty, but I think he's forty one. Okay. Roethlisberger is 37, 37. 38 years old. Yeah. Thirty seven. Okay. Okay. So now, if we're measuring the trajectory of these two guys, and let's assume Ben plays or wants to play until he's forty, then and that's going to be three years away. Mm-hmm. Um, Breeze is more likely to walk away from the game quicker. So for Jameis, it's an easy slide into the starting role, and now you're sort of the heir apparent to Drew Brees, and you're sort of the guy, you know, moving forward. So I think that's why this is a a, a better situation for him. I know people are talking about the Taysom Hill contract, uh, what, two years, $21 million, and and look, at, at the end of the day, Taysom Hill is a gadget guy. The dude is 30 years old. There's no way, there's no chance in hell that the Saints are going to make this guy the quote unquote the heir apparent to Drew Brees. Like, yeah, I get he can do different things. I get that he could play special teams. I get that he could play linebacker. I, I don't know. Um, and he could throw the ball. I, I get that. But the dude is not seasoned enough to where you're just going to throw him into the situation as a starter and make him an every down guy behind center. Yeah. I, I I just don't see that. I, I don't see it. Did you see the meme where it says that uh, um, Jameis Winston has completed more passes to Saints than uh, Taysom Hill did last season? It's like ten to seven. Uh, yeah. Let's let, let let's pull this up right and let's do this. I I feel like pissing some people off tonight. <laughs> Um, so Jameis Winston versus Drew Brees, right? So there's this meme, and you, you text it to me, and I got it right here. So, so Jameis Winston, only 26 years old, never lost a playoff game, can play in any environment, threw 33 touchdowns and more than 5,000 yards, which is a fact, um, about to be the next GOAT, and only thrown 88 interceptions in his entire career. Um, Drew Brees on the other side of this meme, right? On the brink of retirement, chokes every year, can only play well in a dome, only threw 27 touchdowns and didn't even eclipse 3,000 yards, hasn't even won an MVP yet, has thrown a whopping 237 interceptions in his career. Okay, this is a stupid meme. It, it, it's real stupid. It's uninformative. Um, it doesn't tell all the facts to the stories of these guys. Um, the two guys are not even comparable. Let, let's just, let's just keep it, you know, a buck. These two guys are not comparable. So if, if if anybody thinks that they're going to sit Drew Brees with all the money they're paying him, stop it. (laughs) Stop. They're even going to sit Drew Brees, period, because right now Drew Brees deserves the job. Yeah, not, and, and and that's not to say that Jameis Winston isn't a starter because I believe that Jameis Winston is a starter. Jameis he, Winston should be a starter someplace. Just yes, not for the Saints, not this year. Now, if we talking about next year, when and I see uh, Jungle Brother already beat me to it. Breeze got a deal with NBC for next year. Bet. Yeah, Jameis Winston Jameis, should start next year. Jameis, not this Jameis year. will be the starter. Yeah, and Jameis anybody, will be the starter the following year. Yeah, and to anybody who feels like. That should be the case. Yeah, I, 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 we disagree. We just yeah. disagree. And, yeah, and like, it, like it, cut it out. Just really cut it out. Like he shouldn't. He, it's, it's Drew it's, Brees' it's, it's job. It's uninformative. It's Drew Brees' job. And, and why would you even like has never lost a playoff game? What like what? He's never played in a playoff game. Come on, man. Like I, 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 I I'm, I'm going to move on. <laughs> I only got two. I, <laughs> yeah, only got two go. I only got two more topics. So, uh, I, I and I don't really have a, much of an opinion on it, but I thought it was interesting. I was, I was gonna say I, I don't. I don't have anything because I, I think my son was beating beating down the door earlier. So, okay, well, um, I, I, I don't have nothing. Okay, well, I make I make I make it quick. Um, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Dalton, Dalton, Andy Dalton, um, who mm. hasn't been moved yet, uh, right, and is due twenty million dollars this year. Mm-hmm. Says that he is okay with coming off of the bench. That is, and um, let me let me officially say that mm-hmm. um, Andy Dalton has 
to look forward to the rest of his career back on the clipboard. So, well, first of all, Andy Dalton is a dumbass for even saying that before the situation even comes through fruition, right? So, if I'm Andy Dalton, well, no, eventually Joe Burrow is going to get the job, but Andy Dalton as it stands right now, is probably going to be the starter. Like, yeah. why, why, like, don't don't proclaim it yet. Like, just go battle it out in training camp whenever that, you know, whenever that happens. And if you so happen to win the job, then you get the job back. If you lose it to Joe Burrow, then so be it. But yeah. don't don't just come out and be like, oh, I'm okay with being on the bench. And da-da. No, no. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I, I, what, how long he been in the league now? Uh, like nine years, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you got the bench to look forward to, bro. Get ready to hold a clipboard. But if you get, but if he hold a clipboard for twenty million dollars, who am I? Who am I to hate? Who am I to hate? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I will give you my last my last topic. I, I see. I see. I see. Nate is getting restless, <laughs> and I don't. I don't want. Okay. Wanna... Okay. okay. Yeah, I see. You getting restless. Okay. All right. Alright, so Okay, man, calm down, calm down. What's up? Calm, man? calm down, hey, calm down. What you what's up, man? Yeah, that's Uncle that's Uncle, that's Uncle Mike right there. Me? Can you see me? No. Yeah, he can he can see you. What's up, man? He, he can see you. What you crying see, for? You say bro? hi you say, you say hi? Mm. What you crying for? Yeah, I don't I don't uh, know what's going yeah, on. I guess you can't hear me. I don't you know what's going on. on. Alright, uh yeah, so Yeah, right. Alright, right. so <laughs> this is this, this is a personal problem, but uh, but I'm I ask your opinion on it. Uh, uh-huh. So you remember when um, when Gucci came out with those uh, bad sweaters that look like jigaboos and uh, and we boycotted Gucci. We said we wasn't wearing Gucci no more, right? And yes, and yes. By, and Mayweather was like, he don't care, right? Yeah, and, and let's be clear, black people are wearing Gucci again, and that that lasted for about maybe a month, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yep. The other day, I'm watching TV, um, and I see that Papa John's has this uh, pizza sandwich, and it looks delicious to me. Oh, and and I need your opinion, man. Uh, should I go get the sandwich? No. No. <laughs> All right. No. no. Okay, so, I mean, because niggas is, niggas is wearing Gucci, and they hide Shaq. And they attempted to the to, to see that that person who said that that bad thing is gone. And uh, how so? How long do we protest Papa John's forever? Um, look, I'm gonna tell you my situation, right? So, Debbie loves the barbecue wings mm-hmm. at Papa John's, and every time she like every time I bring up, I'm gonna go around the corner to. Oh, so you spend money on? So you've already spent money on Papa John's? No, not me. Not me. She has. Nigga, y'all but... are a marriage. Y'all are a union, nigga. You spent money on Papa sure. John's. Okay, okay. We're, we're not going to get into all this, you know. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a union. This is, you know. Is it's not a it's, union? It's one. We're one. I'm, I'm, it, I'm not going to get into all that. Are you guys not one? But I didn't say we weren't. Oh, I I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying I'm not going to get into that topic about oh, okay. that right now. All right. Mm-hmm. But every time... I bring up, let's go get some Domino's pizza, or let's go to the New York style joint around the corner from yeah. us. Which that day, She's that like, ah, I, right, right. I don't like that pizza, you know. Um, I prefer Papa John's. They, they taste much better, or you know, or at least their, you know, their wings are, you know, so much better than the wings over at Domino's. So it's like, ah, okay, because I be, I be, I be like, I be in my feelings sometimes, like. Like we got all these options. We got three brothers. We mm-hmm. got we got we got we got little Caesars. Like we, we got <laughs> we got we, we got four options of pizza. And now I ain't gonna hold you though. Uh huh. The wings at Little Caesars, the garlic parmesan uh-huh. joints. Uh huh. Them joints just slap. I ain't even gonna hold you. I've had them. I've had them before. Yeah, them joints just slap. They they real real good. Yeah. They they those some real good wings. And and even like um and even like three brothers pizza right mm-hmm. you know I gotta I gotta drive fifteen minutes to three brothers but I I'd be willing to do that I mean they're New York style pizza but she she likes Papa John's so but 
to answer your question, man, don't don't get that sandwich, man. Don't get, don't, don't get that piece of sandwich. Nah, sandwich. man, we still we still yeah we we still on this boycott, man. And I and I get that Shaq was trying to you know change some things, but they got him up out of there, I'm man. About like they got him up out of there too. Right, right, right. So you know, as far as I'm concerned, they 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 still racist to me. <laughs> they still they they still they still grind me. So uh, nah, nah, right. not not when I got options. Not when right. I got other options. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold you. Um, you already broke the boycott. <laughs> you broke it in my ass. So you so you you you, you broke the boycott. So well, you well look. look. Well, look, uh, the money ain't come out of my pocket. Uh, let, let's just put it like that. I mean, it did come out your pocket, though. Uh, but, uh, you okay. Never I mean, your, literally, you never look, swiped your card to no, pay for your wife's no, Papa John's. No, no, no. No. She's giving me the money <laughs> to go get it. All right. All right, man. I mean... That, that, that's 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 all I'm saying, man. Right. But, hey, look, man. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta look through my list of things that... You know the products that we use, and I guess, and I gotta see. Okay, what, what, what's up with this company? What they doing right? Maybe I need to. Maybe I need to boycott Microsoft or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. Only I, I feel like the only people, only people I can think of on my mind that there's no way I'm boycotting is Xfinity and T-Mobile. So. Yeah, there you go. Maybe. Those those are the essentials right yeah, there. Yeah, they call me all kinds of niggas and everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Bill Gates. Hey, Bill yeah. Gates. Like, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. For whatever, sure. whatever stuff Bill Gates yeah, got, say whatever we gotta scrap yeah, that out. Yeah, yeah. No, no, what did Bill Gates do? Oh, so quickly, right? So apparently he's been talking to doctors and stuff about this vaccine uh -huh. for COVID-19. And this dude is acting as if like he's a real, real doctor. And the dude is taking a lot of smoke on Twitter talking about yo like why you why are you trying to you know invent something you're not a doctor and the other thing that he's talking about are these microchip things and that's when dudes is like nah you, you you're not gonna inject no no microchip in my skin like that that ain't something that you know us as a people are, are, are down with so oh, no i might get that, that i might get that auto soon i might get that auto soon chip bro Mm, yeah, okay. When I talk, when I you know, so when I talk, it automatically go into auto soon. I might, I might have to fuck with that. I ain't gonna hold you. Mm, I don't know about that. Man. Nah. Damn. <laughs> just, just don't, just don't, just don't inject no disinfectant, man. Nah, okay? nah, we gonna, no, we can't, and, and you can't, and to the listeners, most of our listeners are pretty woke. You can't drink bleach. <laughs> you can't. Oh my god. You can't Can you believe it. that? Can you believe that the governor's office received calls inquiring if it's okay to ingest bleach yes, or or disinfectants? I, I can't believe that. Actually, I can't Boy, believe we, that. Boy, well, we, 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 we on the earth with some stupid people, man. Yeah, yeah. One happens to be president, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a fact. That's hey, a man. Fact. So I just want to thank everybody in the chat room. We appreciate you. Um, make sure you catch us on demand. On uh, all your your DSPs, Spotify, Apple Music, Google, all that, uh, YouTube. Um, follow us on at Barbershop on Instagram. I'm sorry, at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. Uh, you can follow Trey mm -hmm. at Trey Frazier and myself at Maestro Styles. Follow Trey Frazier on Twitter at Barbershop S P O R two. You can follow me on Twitter at Maestro Styles. Uh, make sure you you like the Facebook page and subscribe to the YouTube page for Trey Frazier. This is Maestro Styles. We'll see y'all next week. And, Peace out. Uh, we holler for a dollar. Bye.